Yes, um, I'm bringing a slightly different perspective here, working um, on a very multidisciplinary publication. But one of the first things I have to say is what an excellent report it was. I can't believe how they managed to encapsulate such a massive area of analysis and debate in a document which isn't that big, really. Um, one of CRJ's interests um, lies in exploring the practical interaction between agencies and actors at the scene of an emergency, connecting the jigsaw pieces, whether it's NGOs, emergency services, governments, affected communities or the private sector. And one thing that the report has drawn out very clearly is we have a massive new resource to add to this, that, that of digital vol volunteers or digital humanitarians. Have to be careful that this doesn't create even more silos and that they're all working together and they understand how they're working together. There's been improvement over the last few years, but um, as, as again the video showed, the first people on the scene are the local, are the local people, closely followed by, um, by the emergency services. And what access do they have to technology? I know for you know, so many countries, even the emergency services don't have radios that talk to each other a lot of the time at disasters. So there's more work to be done there. Paul said um, the disruption of technology. I'd put the democratization of technology there. Um, a lot of interesting solutions are coming from, uh, emanating from non-traditional sources. We've just published an article um, about some software that um, a software developer and an architect town planner from Spain have developed. They, they don't have any prior experience of humanitarian or emergency response, but they have lived through two earthquakes, so they wanted to see how they could put their skills together to use. And I find that very interesting. Um, and the digital volunteers, the hundreds and thousands of voices all helping, um, sifting and processing data, even if volume's an issue, would be mad to ignore such a resource. There's um, so many more opportunities that technology provides now to interact and engage with other disciplines, um, especially horizontally. But there are some challenges, obviously. Um, and I think a lot of those might be through the, the systems that have evolved. We've got um, very independent, uh, interdependent systems that can sometimes be quite fragile in terms of infrastructure. Um, and even more so in disaster areas, you know, there's, we've, there's a whole panoply of risks. We've got the effects of disasters, wind, storm, flood, but we've also got solar flares, electrical storms, power black blackouts, and even if um, some, some uh, networks could crash, even if they're not affected immediately, they could be overburdened by demand, or the police or security services could switch them off. Now, that's likely to be short term, but even then, it can cause a lot of distress and a lot of problems. I think another challenge is, um, well, the dangers and benefits of the um, participative element of social media. And I know that it's a lot, it's more self-regulating than it has been after the riots in London or Hurricane Sandy. Some of the rumours and hoaxes that, uh, that spread, I mean, while very creative, they weren't very helpful. After the Boston bombing, it was interesting to notice that the community, uh, the online community itself started to self-regulate and the volume of untrue information was reduced. Um, one of the current developments in disaster response thinking is you can't have a plan or an SOP for every eventuality because disasters are going beyond the unthinkable, they're becoming wicked problems. So what the thinking is to train people to react, to think creatively, to handle unknown and surprising circumstances. And I'm wondering if this approach could be translated into um, how we approach technology. Don't try to categorise, cat um, classify and control everything, especially in terms of volunteers, data initiatives, but train people to, be, um, to embrace the fundamentals and embrace the serendipity and the flexibility that technology can bring. <coughs> We've noticed a couple of trends, um, a crisis response. I mean, I've looked through a couple of years' worth of articles that we'd written on technology and was struck by, even just a few years ago, we were explaining how Twitter works and what a tweet was and um, saying that it could revolutionise disaster response and preparedness. And a lot of discussion was going, um, especially amid the emergency services, were how um, people were tweeting for, an assi for assistance in emergency. But, of course, the emergency services weren't geared up to respond. They weren't even monitoring tweets. Well, of course, we've got London Fire Brigade now that's leading the way in that. They should be proud of what they've done. And we shouldn't forget the technology isn't just ICT. It's digital radios, video equipment, thermal imaging cameras, GPS personnel location, interactive training, which are all greatly adding to operational commanders' um, disposal, what they have when they're faced with an incident. There's still some suspicion about social media, which can load complexity and stress upon instant managers, especially when you have eyewitness accounts and pictures that are emerging before they've even been formally notified of an incident. Um, so there's still some fear and mistrust on that level. Um, 
but it's uncharted territory and there's you know you can't possibly manage it you can't possibly attempt to manage it it must be avoided and um, I think the last thing really is uh, two points don't assume that new technology is better than traditional approaches in all in all aspects which the report highlights very clearly it's uh, it's not a blanket solution it's not one size fits all it really depends on who you're working with and what their understanding is and how they want to use the technology and uh, training absolutely essential I mean give a completely entirely hypothetical example of a building collapse where the heat seeking um, donated heat seeking um, equipment was wheeled out and then publicly discarded as being faulty but it was a hierarchical and um, cultural um, problem that only senior officers had been trained to use ha had um, been trained in how to use this equipment but they weren't the guys on the front line crawling through the rubble so the training is absolutely vital too if it's to work great thank you Emily